So last video, we talked about our angular momentum quantum number, and we learned that we had four different shapes that we uh, of orbitals that we have. Uh, we we're focusing on just three of them, the s orbital, which is spherical in shape. We have the p orbital, which is dumbbell shaped, and our d orbital, which is the double dumbbell. And with the d orbital, I got a little bit into uh, these different directions or these different orientations that the orbitals can take. And this actually is determined from the next quantum number that we're going to talk about, which is the magnetic quantum number, or m sub l. Okay, so kind of remember here we have five different orientations of our d orbital. Okay, that will come up again on our discussion for the magnetic quantum number. So talking about m sub l. So our magnetic quantum number, m sub l, describes the direction of the, or of the orbital. So <clears throat> how is this, uh, how, how are the orbitals uh, oriented through space? How can we rotate them? And the possible values, okay, integers again, except that they can be negative. So we have zero, we have plus or minus one, plus or minus two, depending on what L is. Okay, so N, our quantum number, dictates what L could be. L dictates what M sub L can be. Okay. The other way you can think about this is rather than um, list it out this way, you could say um, this is essentially negative L in integers up to and including zero and then again integers up to positive L. So if we look at, <clears throat> we were, uh, the highest level we got to is n equals three working with our orbitals. So when n equals three, n, or L, excuse me, can equal basically n minus one. So L has the potential of equaling zero. L can also equal one, and L can equal two. And we found that L, when L equals zero, this means that we have an S orbital, right? And when L equals one, that means we have a P orbital. And when L equals two, that means that we have a D orbital. Okay, that's just the basic shape. So we have a spherical shape, a dumbbell shape, and a double dumbbell shape. Okay. Now, <clears throat> when we look at our orientations, this is meaning essentially how can we flip-flop things? How can we rotate things in three dimensions? How many options do we have? Well, when L equals zero, our only possible values for M sub L is zero. Okay. So what that means is that we only have <clears throat> one orientation. So when we have an s orbital in a certain quantum level, we only have one orbital. One way that we can rotate that orbital around, which makes sense because if we have a sphere, if we rotate it around, we still have a sphere, the shape doesn't change. When L equals L is equal to one, M sub L can equal negative L up and including zero up to positive L. So M sub L can equal negative one, it can equal zero, and it can equal positive one. So for our P orbitals, we have the possibility of one, two, three, different orientations. So three different orientations means we have three p orbitals in a single quantum level. <clears throat> so what we're looking at here, okay, if we're looking at our orientations in space, Essentially, we can have, uh, how do I want to draw this? So we have our x-axis. Okay. We can have a p orbital. 
we have the y axis right coming away uh, going away from us and coming towards us or we can have the z axis going up straight up and down <clears throat> so these are three orientations this would be uh, say the 2px 2py and 2pz so these are the three orientations now remember we had already talked about our orientations with our d orbital and we have four orientations plus one of this other kind of funky type so we should have five total orientations. So that means we should have five m sub l values. So when l equals two, we have our d orbital. m sub l can be negative two, negative one, zero, positive one, and positive two. So we have one, two, three, four, five different orientations, which means we have five orbitals. All right, next video we'll talk about spin completing our discussion of our four quantum numbers.